Hey, I'm going to be live. <laughs> Got my enemies this time. How does it seem to be playing uh, more and more minutes all the time now? What do you feel like uh, is coming around in your game that's, that's pushing the coaches? Uh, just my competitiveness and, and my effort that I put on the floor, and uh, also some of the le leadership capabilities I have. So, that yeah, pretty much. Eric, is there more of a sense of urgency now with this three game losing streak and only having six games left in the season to, you know, the time is now to kind of turn this thing around and get some wins? Uh, yeah, we got, we got six games left, and four of them are at home, and you want to take care of the ones at home. So, uh, you know, in order to do big things after the season and, and to get into the best postseason you can, you got to win these last few games. Uh, otherwise, we'll be sitting there watching or uh, playing in something we don't want to play in. So, uh, you know, everybody's going to be stepping it up, and everybody's always in the gym anyway. So um, we'll be locking in a little bit more and uh, try to take care of these last few wins at home and uh, take, get some on the road, too. I've actually seen a lot from Shea. Um, you know, he, every day of practice, whether it be on the scout team or whether he gets thrown in on Orange, he's uh, he helps us a lot, and he's gonna he's gonna be really good. I tell him all the time. I mean, I joke around with him, but I say sometimes you're great, sometimes I don't know. But uh, you know, that kid's gonna be really good, and um, he's long, and he's he's uh, he always diving on the floor for a seven footer. Uh, um, he blocks shots and alters so many. And, um, you know, me and Devon always talk about and Angus too as well because Angus guards him a lot. But, you know, once he gets that ball up there, he's so long, you can't, you can't block him. You know, when I first got back from my uh, surgery, um, it was just really tough to, to block him because he was so long. But I think he's going to be really good. I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to watching his development over the next few years. And I think he's going to be really good, actually. Have there been any kind of maybe player meetings or anything like that to just kind of regroup and? Talk about what you have to play for this point in the season. We haven't we haven't got together in the locker room as what you know you would consider probably a team meeting, but yeah, we have some of the older guys have discussed and people like Hollis have discussed um, you know the important the importance of finishing out the season strong and uh, you know I've been in coach's office and I've been in there with Angus and uh, you know you just got to keep keep the rest of the guys um, let them know that we still have stuff to play for whether it be the younger guys but I don't feel that's the case because the younger guys you know they always want to play even if they don't even know what we're trying to do they, they still just want to play they're so young and they're so good and they just want to play all the time so I think the whole team knows that you know we're trying to do something we're still trying to do something big and I think everybody's head still up and um, you know we have talked about it about um, you know just, just finishing out the season and not, not get down on ourselves and, and know that we're still trying to do something. Alice, does it help to have four of these last six at home? Yeah, it definitely helps us as a team because we feel we play uh, better basketball at home. You know, we're more everybody's more calm and relaxed playing in front of the home crowd. And I feel that we feed off the crowd uh, way better than uh, being on the road. And uh, it's, just a better, it's just a better comfort zone. We're comfortable with the, with the rims and everything like that. So, uh, you know, it's just going out there now and just taking care of business and uh, following the game plan and just uh, doing what we do. Did you guys see that a guy from ESPN is predicting for you guys to win the Pac-12 tournament? Yeah. And how, how do you feel about that? It's, a lot of that has to do because you guys are such a good three-point shooting thing. Yeah, it's, it's a first, you know, and, and we, we have the potential to do that. You know, we just have to find it, you know, and this in this is that time of the year where, you know, teams really, it's the it's home stretch, and you want to go out there and you want to put your best effort out on the floor. So, you know, that's what we have to do from here on now. We can't come out like we did against Oregon slow, you know. And even myself, I, I feel I have to come out watching film, have to come out more aggressive earlier in the game and not wait till the second half to get going. Because uh, when I'm playing well offensively, I feel we're a better team. And I get guys involved more when I'm um, – I get more steals when we're on defense and stuff like that. So I just got – I feel like we have to, you know, bring it all together now because it's that home stretch. And, and if we do, we have the talent to go – deep in the Pac-12 tournament, I feel we can win it. Eric, what do you think, you know, having been here longer, you know, be getting some kind of national love like that, to have somebody from ESPN saying that you guys could win the Pac-12 tournament? Yeah, I think uh, one of the players sent me a text with that little article piece or whatever. I didn't I didn't uh, see it Langston. at first, but yeah, it was Langston. Yeah, yeah Langston sent me uh, 
the little article, whatever, and it was it was like I haven't seen that before, I, honestly, and nobody's really ever predicted us to do something special. So um, um, I thought I thought it was pretty nice, but again, we can't we can't we can't listen to that kind of stuff when we know we have in our inner circle, and we just gotta we just gotta uh, play play through adversity, play through. Um, whatever they're saying, um, I try not to even look at that stuff. But you know, it, it does feel good for them to say some some good things finally. But um, you know, we have we know what we have to play for, so we'll, we'll be we'll be locking in more and more. Was that something that Langston sent to the whole team, or was it? I don't know if it was a group message or what. I think he said he got it, but uh, yeah, it was, it was like a group message. He sent it to us and during study hall. I got it yesterday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just opened my phone and saw that, and I was just, just trying to figure out what was going on, and I saw it. I was like, oh, okay, but. Yeah, I think he sent it to the whole team, probably. I don't know. The, the funny thing about it, I thought, was that the same writer a couple months ago called Oregon State the second most maligned fan base in college basketball. Yeah, yeah right that one, too. Oh, that. man. But. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just shows it shows when you have a, a, a little bit of a success, you know. Then people start to believe in you, you know. And, and I feel that like we're right there, you know. And I feel like we're getting the, we're turning things around here. and. Uh, He's just a couple wins away and a couple big wins away to, like, you know, taking that next big step. Eric, do you think there's a different feeling kind of in the locker room than the past years because you guys have three really notable seniors, and I think the past couple years we've only had one senior, so maybe those guys don't have a next year. So kind of is that kind of one thing that propels you guys to keep kind of fighting the end of this regular season? Uh, yeah. Um, you know, these guys know that, you know, I'm, I'm sure coaches mention it, mention it, but we've never been somewhat this relevant in uh, this, this late in the season. And, uh, um, and and that feels good because, you know, we've worked hard for it. And, you know, senior night is coming up, and I'm sure they're going to play so hard for that. And I just asked Devon about that, and he said he has, like, ten people coming up for that game. And, you know, when, when Devon plays good, you know, we're just a, a great team. So, um, you know, I, I, I think with uh, – with all the senior leadership and, and all the growth that we've shown over the season, I think that we're going to rally up and try to finish out the season strong. Eric, you're uh, right on the verge of having a school record for uh, blocks. Uh, what would it mean to you to, to have that mark? Um, yeah, I saw uh, Sean tweeted that the other day. But, um, you know, that's, that, that's, that's, that's really humbling. Um, you know, I, n I never thought I would be um, that high. Um, Mentioned mentioned at a at a university, and I, I didn't grow up, I didn't grow up being a high talented player or or recognized in that kind of way. So I, I mean, um, hopefully I can get it. It's four blocks away. I feel like I can do that, but uh, um, we'll see how it goes. And and um, I, that'll be something really special to be you know th at the top um, at block shots. And I take pride in I take pride in blocking shots and. Um, um, I hate when I guard shooters sometimes because I can't go over and help, and it's just frustrating. And um, but um, yeah, that's 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 really humbling. And if I can get that, that would be a great accomplishment for myself. What does it take to be a good shot blocker? Um, probably instincts and uh, probably will. Um, I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm one of uh, just a. Uh, I know how to shot block. I'm not like a Baca or something. I just uh, I see what I can go get, and then uh, with my athletic ability and my instinct and timing, then I can go get it. But um, I wouldn't just say like I'm a I'm a Ibaka or at the beat or something like that. I'm not I'm not like that. Um, I just whenever I see I can help or or help the teammate with my length and athleticism, I can go get it. So I just between athleticism and timing and instinct probably. Yeah. How much of it is um, just basketball smarts and not going for shot picks and that sort of thing? Um, sometimes they get me out of my feet. Uh, you know, I want to go after everything sometimes, and you don't know if they're going to shoot it. But uh, uh, it's just a big thing with time. As soon as the ball gets let go, then you can go get it. But uh, you know, sometimes they they don't see a defender coming, and then um, I can go and weak side weak side block it. But sometimes it might cost me because they might throw it to my guy, which has happened in the last couple of games. Um, they've thrown it to my guy for a shot. But uh, you just got to have time. And I've watched a lot of tape, and when I can go help, and when I can't go help, and um, you know, I just gotta gotta keep watching tape because uh, that that has cost us sometimes. But me trying to go help, so um, just gotta keep watching tape. When you're playing, when you're preparing for a team like Washington State, you know, who has experienced their their struggles this season? How do you kind of prepare yourself mentally to not, you know, fall into that trap that you can fall into against teams like that? 
Um, you know, um, we've been there. We've been there before, and I'm not saying they were too far away, but we've been there before. And uh, you know, you can't take these teams for granted. Um, they they probably still have they they're trying to still do something too. You don't know what their aspirations are, but um, you can't fall into that kind of stuff. They have they're playing they're playing better right now. They got they got their top scorer back. Um, they got. Um, uh, the big guy was Shelton playing at a high level right now. He had 20 and 18 against somebody the last time I saw. So uh, you can't take them for granted. They're a good team and they've, they've been coached well. And um, you know, every time we go against their scouting report, they just they just grind you out. And you got to be locked in for a full 35 seconds. And you know, we're gonna be practicing practicing that until the game. But uh, they grind you out the whole time and they try to lull you to sleep and they get something. And uh, you just got to be fully focused on defense for the full 35 seconds and for a full 40 minutes. You know, they're going to come out playing hard. You know, they, they want to get a win on the road. I mean, you know, they still have stuff to play for, probably, you know, and, 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 and you know, teams come out with pride. No matter, any, any team in this conference come out with pride and they want to play hard and get a win. So, you know, uh, we can't take them light, lightly because we need this win just, just as much as they do. So uh, we just got to come out and, and not try to, like, you know, try to just think we're going to come out and win. Just because we have a better record than them, you know, we, we got to come out there and you know play them as if they were the UCLA's or the Arizona in the conference. And I feel that if we do that, we'll be fine. You guys ever kind of look ahead at your schedule and kind of go, all right, if we can take care of these games and we can set ourselves up for this and be right back in the picture and stuff, like, or do you have to kind of? Focus in There's times where we do, but a coach always, you know, reminds us like taking one game at a time, and, and and that's what we have to do from here on out. You know, there's only six games left, and you know we have four of the six at home, so we just gotta take care of each and every one at home first, and then we'll get to the next game and then the next game. You know, so that's it. How how much would it mean to you guys and to this program to finish the season 500 or above in conference? Um, well, since I've been here, we have uh, we haven't done that, and um, I don't, Sean, whatever, whatever uh, the uh, how long it's been, I don't know how long it's been, but I, I think regardless, you know, we've worked really hard, so I think it would be very accom. I think we'll uh, feel somewhat accomplished, but I think the most the. Um, the most we'll feel accomplished is if we make it to the NCAA tournament. I mean, that's what we've been striving for since since spring and off season, and um, you know, I'm, that's what we're all striving for. But to finish 500, that's something that we haven't done. So it shows that this program is going in the right right direction, and and give it to coach for bringing all these talented players in, and and to keep going, and and to stop listening to all the doubters, and 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 uh, and to just win games. I mean, that, that just feel good. Every time we win a game, we feel so much better than a long ride home loss or, or something like that. So, um, you know, it'll feel, it'll feel good and it'll put us in the right position if we're 500 um, to get into postseason play. So um, that's what we're striving for, to get 500 and above, and we'll see how it plays out. The middle of the Pac-12 pac is still pretty jumbled, and Eric, you've played in two Pac-12 tournaments, so you should know. How much of an advantage would it be to somehow end up with a top four seed and get that first day off? Um, I think that would be an advantage. Uh, it could be a disadvantage too because um, you might be out of sync, you might be just uh, uh, relaxed too much. But um, playing on the first day, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind doing that and, and setting the tone of what Oregon State. Oregon State's not coming out to, uh, coming to play. Um, you know, whether whether it be a top seed or a lower seed, I think that we're going to go and play to win that tournament. Um, that's what we want to do. And we feel that we're capable of doing it. And um, we'll just keep uh, working until then. But like he said, we'll be doing it one game at a time. And we're trying not to look ahead. It, even though it's so close, we want to look ahead. And, and we're like, man, if we just do this, 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 and this, then we can put ourselves in this position. But um, you know, first, you got to take care of Washington State. And they're, and they're going to be coming out to play. So you got to take care of that win. And if you don't take care of that, then we're like right back at where we a uh, four-game losing streak. And, and then we got to go from there. So we need to take care of this. Game at home, everybody needs to play um, at all centers and try to win that game. Alice, I've noticed that you like to favorite tweets after games that are about yourself. And I actually noticed on Sunday that you favored a couple negative ones kind of when you started the game slow. So is that just kind of a fact you acknowledging that you acknowledge kind of the people that are naysayers? Yep, man, I, that's, what, that's, what, that's what fuels me. You know, I've been, I had a lot of naysayers since I was in high school. So, 
you know, that's that's what makes me get up in the morning and get in the gym at eight o'clock in the morning, just keep pushing myself, you know, the the, the doubters and I, and then uh, the positive stuff is is always good to see. And and but the negative is something that really sticks with you and gives you that extra drive to be like the best player you could be. So that's what I use it for. And and I use it as uh, constructive criticism. You know, sometimes this, the things that they're saying that's negative is is true. So you go with that and you run with it. And um, you know, you can't let it get to you too much, but I know how to level it off and, and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I do favor a couple of tweets. And uh, you did tweet after the game about the Oregon fans. I'm curious, did you have a bad, bad experience with the fans there? Yeah, they, they started chanting little brothers. But last time I checked, uh, we, had a, we had a better record than them in the Civil War series. So, uh, uh, and we beat them at home this year. So, you know, that's something that's going to stick with me to, for the next time. We play them, it's going to give me a, a lot of fuel, and uh, I'm going to come out there and, and get them. I'm going to make them hate me as much as I don't like them. <laughs> um, what did it mean uh, getting that, that nice compliment from Luke Walton after the game? Is he someone that you're for, for pretty familiar with, and, and what did that mean for you? Well, he's reached where I want to be, so where I want, want to be some, someday. So. You know, to have him come up to me after the game and, and, and say what he said to me, you know, really gave me more confidence in myself. And uh, it's just, just going to, I'm going to use that confidence, you know, to help the team and, and try to help these seniors, you know, get to the tournament because that's what it's about at the end of the day. It's not about individual, it's about, you know, getting, getting winning as a team. You know, nobody gets acknowledged as an individual player. You could, you could uh, for, for per se, for like Roberto, you know, he leads the confidence in scoring the past two years. And he's like, and nobody gives him any acknowledgement because you know the team hasn't been having success. So I feel like he deserves the acknowledgement because you know we have a good team, and and now when we're winning, you know he'll get the, the respect he deserves. And coach's rotation has been, you know, he's been cutting down on the rotation, but Malcolm's actually getting more minutes lately. What do you think that says about coach's trust in Malcolm and what he's been able to bring to you guys? Malcolm's going to be a, a key part of this team, you know, down the stretch and then for the future, you know, he's going to. He's gonna, he's gonna do big things, and he's in the gym is just as much as me. You know, we spend a lot of time together, so I, I know what Malcolm is capable of, and, and Coach knows what uh, Malcolm's capable of. You know, he just happened to be behind this, uh, the Pac-12 leading scorer, so he he didn't get the same opportunities that I that I've gotten this season. So I feel that he's gonna shock a lot of people with his play, and you're gonna continue to see him coming in the game, changing the tempo of the game with his defense, and he's gonna go out there and have some exciting plays, you know, some exciting dunks and, and, and make some shots. And Eric, uh, I talked to your AAU coach a few days ago. He said he was coming up in the coming days to kind of try to make it up to Corvallis. Have you got, is he, is he going to be able to catch any of these games and have a chance to talk to him? Um, I hope so. Um, you know, me and Joe play on that same AAU team. Um, I played on two AAU teams, so I'm assuming you're talking about a year. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that he can get a chance to watch. Uh, he took me in when I didn't have too much, and uh, I went to another team, and, um, you know, I, I ended up getting some more looks in college, and, um, you know, he, he took me in. And anybody who takes you in when you're, when you're, when you're down and, and nobody really wants you like that, then you got to remember people like that. And uh, that would be good to see him watch my, my growth and, and to come out and watch a few games. That would be nice.